just wait for a moment. I'll try to share my screen with you. Okay, so uh, before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping rules. Uh, the first one, please uh, stay on muted as we have uh, quite many participants in the meeting today and committee will record the session. So after this, if you need uh, to see the recording, you can contact us or view it on our social media. Also use the chat box for questions as the moder uh, moderator will help you to raise questions to the speakers. And last, tell us how, do, how we did in the feedback form that we will provide by the end of the session. All right, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, the Dean of Atmajaya Catholic University, Pak Irenius Dwinanto Bimo. Pak Bimo, hello, how are you, Pak? Hi, great, Pak, thank you. How are yeah, you? you? I am good, Pak. Okay, I think I'll give the stage to you, uh, Pak Bimo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Frank Selian, uh, Mr. Manis. Morning, Pak. Hi, Miss Alex, Miss Margareta, Natasha, student, parents, teachers. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, even though it is online. Uh, this morning even is exciting because it is a series of SCCA uh, webinar. Uh, this webinar will inspire all of you to become the business and community leaders. In collaboration with ICCA and the London School of Accountancy and Finance, Atmajaya Accounting Study Program offers a program that can help you to take this great opportunity. Uh, AIPA program uh, with uh, when you uh, take this program, you have the chance to have the passport to global. Uh, you can get many benefits from this program and you will get a formal degree from two well-known university, Atma Jaya and uh, OBU. And the student will be allowed to have a global experience through activity designed for it. And, most, and the most important is you will get a prestigious professional certification, ACCA. Uh, but IPA program, Matthew will explain in the detail about this program in the next, next session. Uh, thank you, uh, SCCA, LSIF, partners and colleagues. Happy discussion and stay healthy. And of course, we are waiting for you to join the IPA program. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Mr. Franz. Thank you, Pa Bimo. Yeah, uh, the next one we will hear from our ACCA country head, uh, Miss Hani Karunia, to deliver an opening speech. Uh, Miss Hani, good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Franz, uh, and everyone. Apologize if there is a loud background noise because my neighbor just decided to do some renovation. But uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before I start, on behalf of ACCA Indonesia, I'd like to say thank you to all the team involved from our prestigious partner, Atma Jaya University, under the leadership of Pak Bimo, including the assistance from Bulidia and her peers. Special thank you also goes to our partners for this event, our ALP, LSAF, with the Chief Mr. Manis, that also our moderator for today and all of our special guest speaker for today, Ms. Alex Huerta, the member of ACC International Assembly, who embedded the globe trotter digital nomad, Ms. Abby also who have worked across the globe between continents as a CFO for one of major companies in China and currently reside in Jakarta. Last but not least, Natasha Kimberly, who has been one of our selected student ambassador today, who also uh, joined us, uh, who embarked on her journey to become ACC a member while just finishing her Oxford Brooks University degree recently. So congratulations to you, Natasha. Yes, um, since, you know, maybe the noise is starting getting uh, loud. Uh, so if you're thinking about a career in accountancy, be inspired and plan your journey ahead by exploring the multiple career paths and roles open to you for, by using the skills that you learn from ACCA qualification. Get your career off to a flying start by learning the language to impress employers with the skills required for the job so you can get focused to be the expert in the business. Um, 
align with one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals on creating decent work and support on economic growth. ACCS support accountants to progress in their careers so they can actively contribute to sustainable economic growth. Um, also, uh, drive your career forward using the navigator to learn the language to impress employers with the skills and value that you offer and connect to life job opportunities and careers advice on SCCE careers. Just recently, we launched a career navigator. For more information on that, you can also find us in the Instagram, SCCA.Indonesia, and our Facebook, including also my personal LinkedIn, Hani Karunia, to stay connected on our offering as well. So be ready to be inspired and keep your curiosity in the right direction that can move you closer to your dream career or dream job that you seek. And without further ado, I'd like to start the session today and give the floor to our team. Thank you all again. Thank you to the team and again to our amazing speakers and to the participants as well. Thank you. Uh, have a blessed day. Thank you, Franz. Over to Thank you. Thank you, Bu Hani, for your support, Bu Hani. Oh, you're welcome, Pa. Terima kasih. Thank you, Bu Hani. Likewise. Right. Okay. So before we go into the main agenda, uh, please allow me to briefly introduce and share about ACCA. Okay, as you can see on the slide, ACCA is actually the world most forward-thinking accountancy body from the UK since 1904. In ACCA, we believe that accountancy is vital for economics to grow and prosper, which is why we work all over the world to build the profession and make the society fairer and more transparent. Uh, we have more than 230,000 fully qualified members and 536,000 fewer members in more than 179 countries. They're among the best and most highly sought after accountants, and they work in every uh, sector you can imagine. So uh, in this nutshell, we have global partnership, including businesses, large and small, government and educational institution. Right, so on the screen, you can all see the overview of ACCA modules. Our portfolio of core qualifications supports the development of professional accountants. We're one of the first accountancy bodies to ensure that our core qualifications fit together to help our students progress through them as part of their development. So in this case, we develop the strategic forward-thinking professional accountants the world needs. It's how, how uh, we unlock the potential of individuals and organizations and ultimately shape the future of the professions. In particular, uh, we want to make sure our students are work ready and also equipped with the skills that employers tell us they vitally need from newly qualified professionals. That's why we built this as a market leading blend of technical, ethical, and professional skills into the world-class accountancy qualification. So maybe if you see on the screen, uh, you can look at the modules inside ACCA qualification, and I will explain more about the qualification in the next slide. Right, so, uh, here is the overview of our ACCA qualification. The program is actually divided into several stages yes. from fundamental level to strategic professional. Uh, as you can see also students have to complete up to 13 exams, but if they already have a relevant recognized qualifications, exemptions can be awarded for some of uh, or all of the applied knowledge and applied skills level. So uh, going back to the first one, Applied Knowledge, it's an exceptional introduction to the world of finance uh, and accounting. And also our Applied Knowledge exams provide students with a broad understanding of essential accounting techniques. Uh, you can see also in the, in the level, we have three models, business and technology, management accounting, and also financial accounting. The next stage is the applied skills level. So these exams continue building on the skills needed to become a, prof a professional accountant. Uh, applied skills develops the strong, broad, and practical finance skills required in the future by strategic professionals accountants in any sector and also industry. Uh, what's interesting in this applied skills level, actually it's been matched to a UK bachelor's degree level, and our students can also gain a world-renowned degree from Oxford Brookes University, uh, Bachelor of Science in Applied Accounting while studying for these exams. 
and the last stage of the level is the strategic professional. The, uh, in this, every element has a real work focus. Students will be well prepared uh, to handle challenges they'll face in the workplace. So the result in the end, our students will become strategic, forward-thinking professional accountants equipped with the unique plan of skills uh, and add immediate value within their organization. Another interesting thing also, the, the students can also study for a master degree in professional accountancy uh, from University of London uh, while studying for the strategic professional level. On top of that, we have the experience requirement, three years of relevant work experience, plus the ethics and professional skills model. And then in the end, the student will be eligible for uh, being qualified as an ACCA member. Okay, so the next is our career portal. I'm very happy to share with you that ACCA has its own career portal. Uh, the website is jobs.accaglobal.com. In here, it's actually uh, containing all the vacancies around the world in the accountancy and finance industry. So if you look at the screen, uh, we have Asia Pacific. And if you go through the link and then uh, drop down to Indonesia, you can see all the vacancies available that is uh, posted on our career portal. Yeah, I think I'm just uh, gonna give a short explanation about how uh, qualification is important, especially when you're entering the workplace. So if you look at the screen, uh, this is an example of how uh, a position was being uh, advertised on the internet. And they mentioned that they prefer someone uh, with professional qualifications such as ACCA. Uh, this is for a starting uh, or entry level uh, position, but you can also see in the next slide, this is for more a senior position. They also mentioned that they prefer uh, somebody with a professional qualification. So in this case, it's ACCA. Right, I think uh, that's the end of my brief introduction about ACCA. I'd like to give the stage uh, to our partner, uh, university partner, Unika Atmajaya, where we are happy to share about the newly launched uh, IPA program. I think we have Matthew joining us here today from Atma. Hello, Pat friends. Hello, hi, Matthew. Yeah, over to you, Matthew. The stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm going to share my screen. Is it visible right now? Yeah, yeah, we can see it, Matthew. Okay, so, so. Let me introduce myself. Good, I'm, good morning, everyone. So maybe some of you didn't know me yet. So let me introduce myself. My name is Matthew Hanijaya. Right now, I'm studying at Almajaya Catholic University of Indonesia. And right now, I am in my second semester, third semester and second year. So before I want to explain to you guys about this new program that has been launched this year, uh, let me ask you this first. Have you ever heard about Atma Jaya before or maybe know about Atma Jaya before? Could you just maybe share in the chat? Yes or no, maybe I could get some response. Yes, I was graduated from Atma Jaya to Matthew. Oh, oh really? <laughs> See, wow. Yeah. Such, such a close world. Okay then, so for those of you who didn't know about Atma Jaya before, before, so Atma Jaya is right now currently the top three best private university in Indonesia. And not only that, in 2019, Atma Jaya has also been rewarded by the QS World Ranking, top the first star in inclusiveness, first star in first star in social responsibility, and also five star in employability so you have a higher chance to get employed by by a lot of different companies multinational companies if you graduated from atma jaya so before and also and now i want to share about to you guys about the atma jaya international programs of accounting so this year atma jaya has already collaborated with acca as you can see here so the accounting program of Atma Jaya Catholic University has succeeded in obtaining ACCA accreditation. By acquiring this, all of Atma Jaya students and will be in the future, will get will be easier for the accounting students to get an ACCA degree. We have already 
have the uh, collaboration until 2025. Uh, right now, there are nine holders that the student needed to complete the ACCA Advanced Diploma in Accounting and Business Certification. Just one more step to get your ACCA degree. It's very easy, right? Just by this program, you can all can get an easier path to achieve that degree. So what is the benefit to join the APA program, right? What do I get? That's the most important one. So let me explain to you guys. The, uh, what is the benefit? First, of course, you will get the bachelor degree from accounting from Atma Jaya Catholic University of Indonesia. Like I have mentioned before, Atma Jaya currently is the top three private university in Indonesia. But not only that, you also get a Bachelor of Honors degree from a reputable university from United Kingdom in apply accounting from Oxford Brooks University. You get a double reward in just one program, right? But not only that, like we have, like the uh, Franz already mentioned before, you will also get ACCA Advanced Diploma in Accounting and Business. One more step to get your ACCA degree. And then, as you can see before, the require, some of the requirements to, to apply for a job requires ACCA, right? So this program is very beneficial to you all. The fourth one, and also my personally, my preferred best is global experience. You can get an immersion where you will spend one until two weeks outside abroad in Atmajaya Partnership Uni Partner University, for example, university from Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and many, many more. But not only that, you can also get the chance to have a student exchange where you will learn in Atmajaya Partner University. The last one, you will also get a chance to have an internship and also mandatory to have an internship in international companies outside of Indonesia, maybe in different countries, right? So in this program, because it is also an international program, Atma Jaya will provide you to become a global superstar. The fifth one is that you will also get the opportunity to get hired by ACC approved employer. There are a lot of companies that already have uh, ACCA um, collabor collaboration, for example, like the, account the accounting firm, the big four, Deloitte, PwC, and Deloitte, KP KPMG also, and then EY, there's many more. And not only that, we have also have insurance company from Prudential and also Allianz. What about banks? Hey, SBC. What about oil and gas? We have we have uh, Petronas, Chevron, and there's a lot of other companies. So we have a lot of open doors for you guys for your future. The next one is the free certification from Journal.id. So for some of you who don't know this, Journal.id is a uh, software that is used by accountants in this world today. So you will get a free certification from Journal.id. And also you will get a free basic SAP certification where 80% of companies in all around the world use SAP. And you will have the credits that prove to you that you already know a little basic about SAP. So that is the benefit. But it doesn't stop only there. You also get the facilities from Atma Jaya and from ACCA. What are the facilities? So you will have the classes in Semanggi campus, Jakarta, but you also have the chance to use Atma Jaya facility like student central learning, the free Wi-Fi, the complete library. And also we have a professional lecturers that have amazing backgrounds. You can feel the diversity culture in Atma Jaya, and also you will have the chance to get a free ebook to explore more about the world of accounting and to increase your knowledge about accounting. As for the facilities from the ACCA, all of the initial registration, the modules that you guys needed to achieve the diploma, the advanced diploma 
is already in this program. We, Atmaja will provide you the facilities and also support you to get that diploma. So you may, may think that you may right now may wonder, oh my God, such a wonderful program. I'll, I don't think I don't have to think about anything else. I already just joining this program, you already achieved so much. I don't need to search for another certification, international program is IPA already provided you. But how much does it cost? Is it so expensive? No, you guys don't need to be worried because this program is very, very profitable. So in all of this semester, first semester, you only need to pay around 35 million rupiah, or for the whole program, you only need to pay 285 million rupiah. You also could have an installment applied first. So don't need to worry, guys. Just join us and it will be ben very beneficial. And for your information, the IPA will be started in the art semester 2022 until 2023. So what are the requirements that you guys needed to apply for the IPA program? Because this program is very, very prestigious. You will also have another requirements that is needed to prove your seriousness in this program. So you have to, to wake up motivation letter and also send it to Atmajaya. The second one, you will have an interview with the head of the uh, Faculty of Economic and Business. The third one, you will have an English proficiency test or TOEFL test. And the minimum score is 450 or TOEIC test, minimal 405. But Matthew, what do I need to, I didn't know where to get this score. I didn't know where to take the test. It's fine. Atmajaya will provide you, see? In this program, Atma Jaya will be your best partner to achieve your global dreams. So for the registration, just I will send you the link later, join the atmajaya.ac.id. But before that, I want to show you guys that right now Atma Jaya also have a program with it is called the best rank reward. So there is a test period of and the last registration is tomorrow. If you are the one who has the best score, the best test score, you will have the chance to have a tuition fee discount for around 35 million rupiah. So what is the type of the tuition fee? It is called the SPP. So you will have a discount for around 35 million rupiah if you have the best score in the test tomorrow not tomorrow uh, but in the period in the next period so let me remind you again the registration is only until tomorrow so please 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 do not hesitate just please join us and you will get all the benefit to achieve your global dreams but not only that but not only that, we also have a virtual open house in 13th of November, 2021. And for those of you who attend the virtual open house, we'll get another tuition fee discount for 2.5 million rupiah. And yeah, so if you guys join the uh, best rank reward and also join the virtual house, you will get around 30 to 40 uh, 30 to 40 tourism fee discount. It's very amazing, right? So the choice is yours. If you re so the choice is yours. If you want to register until tomorrow, you will get a one the 30 percent the 35 million this tourism fee discount. And also, if you join the uh, virtual house, you will get also get 2.5 million uh, tourism fee discount for 2.5 million. Is very beneficial and is it is also Atmajaya Atmajaya things to support your education. So, of course, you must be interested, right? So, please don't forget to join by clicking this link, or maybe you can save it later. Join the Atmajaya.ac.id. Don't forget. 
if you don't forget the best rank reward is only for until tomorrow the rescue station time and if you guys have many any more questions regarding the hyper program or maybe you have some you need some help choosing is feel free to contact us we have bulidia and also butia or maybe butias or maybe you could email us at ipad.atmajaya.ac.id. It's fine. We are very friendly. We will answer all of your questions. We will support you guys for your future. So I think that's it for my presentation. Thank you, Pat Franz. I will give it back to you. I will give the time back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Matthew, for the presentation. I think that's a very interesting and attractive offer, yeah, especially from Atma Jaya. Uh, back in my day, uh, I don't think there is any international program like this. So I would say that uh, the current students now is kind of lucky because you have this attractive package. And if you have any questions or if you have uh, any inquiries, feel free to reach out to Atma Jaya team. And also, and also Butia or maybe Butias. Or maybe yeah. you could email us at ipad at atmajaya.ac.id. It's yeah. fine. We are very friendly. We will answer all of your questions. We will support you guys for your future. So I think that's it for my presentation. Thank you, Pat Franz. I will give. Okay. Thank you so much, Matthew, once again. And um, but yes, maybe uh, you can help me with the slides presentation for uh, the next session. Sure, sure, uh, thanks. Yeah, and now uh, we will proceed with the main agenda. Uh, we have with us today three incredible future leaders that will be sharing their experiences and insight about their journey in finance and accounting profession. So I think the next session will be moderated by our member who has been very supportive throughout ACCA Indonesia journey, and he is Mr. Manis Kitwani. I will read his short bio. Uh, Ms. Tias, is the screen ready yet? Okay, uh, sure, wait, yeah, give me time. Okay. Right. Yeah, uh, as we can see today on the screen, uh, here is our moderator of the day, Mr. Manis Kitwani, ACCA MSC. He is the CEO and also founder of London School of Accountancy and Finance, the only gold approved learning provider in Indonesia. He was also the first Indonesian to complete the ACCA qualification in the shortest time frame of only two years. Uh, back then in EY, he attained extensive experience in financial reporting and also auditing. Besides public practice, he has been in professional education and training industry for almost 15 years, mainly devoting himself to his vision of trainer and has taught in reputable corporate clients such as Unilever, Prudential, and HSBC. Um, on top of that, Mr. Manis Gitwani also uh, has been working together uh, to train the trainer sessions for Indonesian Institute of Chartered Accountants and also ACCA accredited university partners. I think uh, I'll give the stage to you over uh, over to you, Pak Manis. All right, thank you. Thank you, Pak Franz. Can you hear me? Yeah, very clear, Pak. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. A very good morning. Uh, selamat pagi. Salam sejahtera semuanya. Yeah, so uh, this is an exciting event. Uh, uh, the game changer, uh, you know, when, when people talk about games now, uh, I'm reminded of the recent games that everyone is uh, talking about, which is the squid game. Yeah, so I know some of you think about uh, uh Squid Game as, as uh, wow, it's so scary, so fearful, you know. So, uh, you know, what, what that gives me a, a mind that, you know, if in the, in the Squid Game, uh, if you don't follow by the rules, if you don't have a strategy, uh, if you don't know where to go and where to navigate, uh, 
uh, that then you you will probably be be dead, you know. Uh, so so like that in this in what we want to show today, this game changer is about uh, you we we telling you that look, this is the future, this is the strategy, you know. And and people who do not want to change, people who do not want to adapt, uh, you may not be able to uh, survive. So I'm so excited to see. Uh, uh, the presentation by uh, Atma Jaya, who are our uh, very close partners, and and our our first of them, you know, Atma Jaya is, you know, if you think about Atma Jaya, is a very uh, established institution and willing to adopt, willing to bring in a professional qualification uh, into uh, an academic qualification with with Atma Jaya's uh, renowned reputation. Uh, they brought in uh, this certification in, so uh, you know, this adaptive. Uh, adaptive uh, uh, style of Atma Jaya will keep Atma Jaya at, at, at its forefront. So, uh, you know, when Matthew said, uh, we're talking about fees, uh, you know, you, you know, when you, if you were to apply and go and study in the UK uh, with Oxford Brooks uh, University, uh, I think you, you will pay even more than uh, two or three times or four times uh, than that. You know, I know OBU charges around, around $100,000 uh, plus together with your uh, living costs and everything. So this opportunity that is being presented uh, uh, today is really a game changer. Yeah, yeah. A, a renowned institution bringing professional qualification and asking you that do it here in Indonesia and we'll give you that global uh, experience. Now, now ACC has also uh, brought in this uh, latest research uh, called Career uh, Navigator. So, Ms. Tias, if you uh, would help me uh, go to the uh, Career Navigator website, let's explore this. And after this, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll lead you to the three uh, speakers today who will actually show you live examples of what I'm talking to you uh, shortly. So, yeah, this is the Career Navigator website, careernavigator.accaglobal.com. It has come up with uh, 25 drivers of change. Yeah, ACCA uh, always comes up with this uh, uh, research and asking you to think ahead and plan ahead. Yeah, strategic wise. Yeah, otherwise you remember you will lose out in the squid, uh, squid game of of this uh, uh, in being in the, as a finance professional. So now oh, they've also come up with 25 drivers of change. They have come up with uh, the four career zones and also about the seven capabilities, yeah? Now, your role here is to put you on the map. Yeah, where are you on the map? So if, Ms. Yes, if you could uh, show them first, the capabilities that is expected of uh, finance and business uh, professionals. So uh, let's, if you go up, go up a bit, and then you'll see cap capabilities. Let's, let's explore capabilities first. Uh, you can click on the navigator. There. Right on the on the right hand side, Miss Yes. Yeah. No, on the right hand side. Yeah, navigator. Correct. Click that. Yeah. Yeah. There you will see uh, capabilities and career zones. So you explore that. Yeah, so you'll divide your skill levels to three levels. Are you a proficient? That means you know your stuff, you know your, uh, you have the right knowledge, right? But uh, the next level is, are you an expert in, in that particular area? You, are you an expert in reporting? Are you an expert in financial management? Are you an expert in leadership, right? And then so they move you from expert even to give you to the next level, uh, are you a leader? Yeah, so please know ACCA uh, is designing the whole content in, in preparing you to become a leader. So it, it brings you through the stages from you becoming proficient uh, to becoming an expert and then a leader. Uh, Mrs. if you can press uh, capabilities, let's see what are those seven capabilities that is expected of uh, business and finance professionals. Go next. There. Yep. 
Yeah. So first one is collaboration, right? Your ability to 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 bring collaborations into light. So we are not in the business of only competing, but learning is a skill. Ability to communicate well, ability to see synergies, ability to uh, bring the the best of your uh, of of your partners. Yeah. So collaboration is a key skill that is highlighted by uh, ACCA research to uh, as a key capability. Next, and then you see digital. Yeah, digital skills. How do you how do you convert your uh, data into a story? How do you prescribe solutions? and tell a story that your company is performing at this particular level uh, and this is what is needed like a doctor yeah doctor knows how to diagnose your uh, issue what is the problem why why the problem arised right and then uh, what will be the future predictive uh, ability and then able to prescribe a solution right so that's how digital skills uh, come in and then there is a capability uh, with regard to drive yeah, you're able to drive your driving ability. Yeah, you, It's one thing uh, for you to be able to, oh, okay, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do this well. But how is your ability to drive your team? Yeah, that, that's the next level of things. Yeah, so ability to influence and persuade and bring the same level of energy for your team is also part of driving skills. Yeah, so all these capabilities are embedded within the ACCA uh, framework. Ethics. Is, is a cute thing. Ethics is not only a, a one day thing. Ethics requires to be rooted. You need to be rooted in your daily decision making that whenever you make decision, you're not deciding based on what is best for me, but what is best for the society, what is best for the, the customers, what is best for the stakeholders, right? Ethics. And then you always have, you are, you are as a finance professional are able to offer insights which other people don't see. You are able to see things which other people don't see. That's a key capability is expected from a finance uh, person. That uh, can, you, can you give me an early alert that the company is about to have a problem in one year from now? That's insight. Can you give me an alert? The problem of the company is exactly in which branch and which particular employee is causing a problem. That's an insight, right? And then, and the capability of able to have a business which is sustainable, yeah. So these seven capabilities, you, you, every every button that you see there will help you to see that uh, okay, from this capability, uh, what career zones that is open to me, and they even tell you which companies have open uh, vacancies relating to this capability. Is that's amazing, right? So they map map it out, you know, for for you. Uh, this is what the company wants. This is the capability. This is the uh, uh, career zone that you need to operate in. And this is the level of uh, uh, skills that you need to have. Uh, proficient, expert, uh, and as well as uh, as a leader. Right. So, so now you notice it is not about you just having a bachelor's degree, but it is for you to map out your uh, capabilities uh, so that you can meet the company's objectives. So this is a very forward thinking uh, tool that ACC has designed. Now let's look at the career zones. Right now, the career zones of ACCA that has been put in this research, it is a, a mind boggling. Why it is mind boggling? Because I never saw that it, there will be a time where finance people, business professional, finance professionals will be asked to be performing in these four different zones. Uh, in, in Back then, we, I, I only thought that finance people will only be in the business of reporting, that we are reporting value, what the company, how the company has performed uh, historically, and, and, and to some extent, how will it perform in the future? We were in the reporting business. But now, uh, the mindset has changed. It's not about reporting uh, it anymore. You, you need to also create value right creating value and also uh, protect value yeah so now i'm not only in the end uh, reporting that this is the financial performance this is the management performance i'm also actually in the business of helping the uh, uh, the marketing department helping the business development department to add value in their side creating value helping the leadership of the company to understand that this is exactly the direction we should go on so can you imagine you are being actually asked to almost think like an entrepreneur, 
yeah, able to add value in every part of the business. And, and that's that's a major transformation. That's a major transformation. So if anybody says, oh, finance is going to die because of technology, uh, that is that is definitely uh, uh, not the case because our roles have transformed. We, in fact, technology has made us more human because, be, because technology will be able to do what uh, repetitive work is involved in. Uh, and our job as, as professionals will be to add value in these four zones. So let's look at what are these four zones. Number one, uh, transformation driver. I, I love that. Yeah. So look at the transformation driver. It's, yes, if you can click that transformation driver. There. Do you see that? Now, as a transformation driver, you will ask yourself that, what can I do being a, a skilled with so much of capabilities that Mr. Manish explained? What can I do? You can be in these areas. You could be an advisor to the company. You can, so many, many, many uh, organizations now uh, make finance professionals as an advisor operating from outside the company. Yeah. Uh, later, Ms. Alex will show you how she has added value to the companies that uh, th those are her clients. Yeah. So she advises, she provides consultation to so as an advisor. Yeah. Uh, and then also as an educator. Yeah. Because you're, you're training new uh, 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 professionals. Yeah. And as an entrepreneur. Yeah. It, you, you know, you, you come up with a startup idea and you have a great plan. You have a great idea, but it's not only about idea, right? It's also able to persuade those investors to give you those funds, yeah, so that you can slowly transform yourself into becoming a unicorn. Everyone wants to become a, a, a unicorn. So your capability of using those resources and come up with a very solid, detailed business plan. And that's the skill that uh, uh, is embedded as an entrepreneur, uh, able to see the whole picture, think ahead, forecast ahead, five years ahead, and, and go into the details, yeah. It's always about going into those. So as an entrepreneur, uh, so, you must be wondering how come I'm using uh, finance as a way to become an entrepreneur? Isn't that I'm supposed to go into traditional pathway to become an entrepreneur is to do an MBA or, or do, do, do other ways of doing it, yeah? Uh, or not even studying, yeah? Just uh, becoming a dropout and then I, I become an entrepreneur. Many people have this kind of thoughts, but this is where you become a professional entrepreneur. Yeah, you know exactly what you're what you're talking about. You have variety of stakeholders. So I want to highlight on this finance professionals taking an entrepreneur role, and 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 Miss Alex later will share will help me share her experience uh, using those skills becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, also, as a global business service professional, uh, technology and data leader, and taking the C level jobs. Yeah, you will notice uh, forty percent of finance uh, professionals. Uh, CFOs in the New York Stock Exchange have taken the role of becoming CEOs. So your, your chance of taking the CEO uh, helm uh, as a finance leaders are very high. Yeah. So if you're saying, oh, this is how do I become a CEO? Do I use IT? Do I use uh, 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 what, what varieties of background, marketing background, what background? You see, if you are in only having academic degree, you most likely will specialize in uh, only in uh, one particular specialization, marketing, law, uh, finance, and all. But if you are in a certification, they, as you saw, the capabilities are wide. You are supposed to learn almost everything. HR, marketing, business leadership, finance, reporting, uh, law, taxation, uh, everything, yeah, uh, technology. So because they, they have mapped out capabilities. So this is a major difference between uh, academic qualifications and certifications, yeah? So that's where you have a huge opportunity to become a C-level uh, leader. Next. Then next is becoming an analyst, converting your data into numbers. Yeah, You can become a business partner. You don't have to work in one finance department, sitting in one corner uh, behind the desktop and uh, keying in numbers, uh, trying to tally and reconcile. Uh, those, those that that's not the world that you want to live in. Let let the let the software and let the computers handle that. Your job is to use those information and help other business divisions, help production, help purchasing, help the business processes, help operations. Yeah, so you you will be positioned as uh, a person who is a partner to all of the business units. 
that's that's an amazing uh, work to do because you will find yourself being so meaningful yeah uh, performance manager yeah you have know exactly what are your kpis and process leaders uh, process indicators and how can i drive the organization there project managers treasury professionals and corporate finance uh, expert okay next there's the second zone and then now the third zone as an assurance provider because you are a public professional your duty is to the public right you you will act independently and provide assurance as an external auditor as an internal auditor as a forensic investigator as a public sector auditor yeah so you are providing you are using your title as a chartered certified accountant to tell people that look i am when i say something it is independent it is not there is no bias and it 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 gives a credibility to your uh, reports as as a whole yeah so you are assurance provider next the person who deals with stakeholder and the the stakeholder reporter yeah the person who is dealing with investors right because investors one who do not understand your thick annual reports somebody needs to communicate ability to communicate so you you, you realize how important is communication how how important is for you to present your ppts well enough uh, in a nice way not in a boring numbers way to present to your investors in okay in two pages i can explain you how the business is performing in the whole dashboard while you're walking in i can explain to you in the dashboard looking at your phone you can see exactly how's the inventory today how's the company performing today investor relation all right investors you need to be able to hand, handle that particular role tax expert controller uh, reporter yeah so that's why i said uh, finance guys handle what they handle creating value and protecting value and also reporting the value not only in the reporting side but also creating side yeah so with that four career zones i want to uh, invite uh, our uh, three esteemed speakers and share us their insight about the variety of the career zones that has been presented by acca and how has it uh, manifested in their own uh, personal experience as well as professional experience so first on the uh, on the on, on the line is ms alex uh, falcon huerta uh, she's uh, uh, an international assembly member a zero's most valued professional uh, uh, awardee and also uh, she's a, a entrepreneur uh, vab business awardee uh, she's also got award from the british accountancy award and also uh, as a acc accounts and audit supervisor in fmaat so uh, uh, without further delay can i invite ms alex to share her part of the story hello manish hi thank you yes. very much um, i'm just going to share my screen if that's yes. okay just make sure everybody can see that yes yes visible perfect okay brilliant thank you so much and hello and welcome um it's amazing to be here thank you for your time today um to invest in your time is super important at this stage and your career um it's something that you'll remember for the rest of your life um as uh, i'll explain it a bit later on um so i'm alex falcon huerta and i'm acca So this little girl was me. She wanted to be an entrepreneur. And one of the things somebody said to me was if you learn your finances that you'll be successful, more successful if you had finance background. So today she is I'm an author. So I wrote this book during COVID, um The Secrets of Business for Young Entrepreneurs. I wanted to share my skills and um, what I've learned in business setting up businesses. um and i wanted to make sure that that was geared up to the person of today going into business um i am a multi award uh, a multi business owner so i've set up a digital accountancy firm in 2015 using my acca which is international clients um around the world um i am also able to travel with my work hence why i'm in bali and my business is located in the uk 
I've traveled 15 different countries since setting up my business. I've set up a offshore company in Sri Lanka and I hire ACCA finalists, ACCA qualified people, and I help other accountancy firms around the world um, with um, staff. I also set up a uh, membership company for accountants who want to set up their own practice so I can guide them and mentor them. So those businesses have derived from me being ACCA qualified. They're all connected. Oh, sorry, it's gone. Um, I am a trailblazer. Oh, sorry, it's gone. Uh, my screen, um, I'm so sorry. Something's happened to my slides. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, sorry, my, um, the pictures are in the way. So I'm a leader, a trailblazer and a pace setter in the UK. I was recognized as being digital from the beginning and a pay setter. And I've helped ACCA form and shape the digital side for accountants and for um, uh, students in um, not just in the UK, but also to help New Zealand and Australia as well. Um, I'm a role model um, to those people around me. I travel the world, but I also make sure that I take care of the people around me. Um, and I help um, being an advocate to ACCA to make sure that people understand and learn what it takes to be um, a qualified accountant, but also um, an entrepreneur and to set up their own accountancy firm. So today I have a multi-award winning digital firm with international clients. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a businesswoman. I dreamed of being, I'm a columnist for Accounting Web. So I write a monthly article about technology and the technology that you can use every single day when you run your business and your accountancy firm. I wrote my book, as I mentioned earlier, The Secrets of Business for Young Entrepreneurs. I'm a keynote speaker in the accounting and finance and technology industry. Um, and I speak on webinars as I am today um, and uh, live conferences um, globally as well. I'm a pay setter and trailblazer for the accountancy industry and I'm an ACCA super advocate. I feel even being ACCA has allowed me to become part of this journey and to help people along their journey as well. It's been something that's inspired me. I helped with the MOU, so the Memorandum of Understanding with Zero and Digitalization. And I'm an International Assembly member since 2018 for, for England. I've been a support to the all party parliamentary group, International Trade and Technology for the government in the UK. I've also helped and am part of Tech and Global Forum since 2019. Um, I helped to support and interact with the government over COVID and to give quite critical feedback on my customers as they were struggling over the time uh, during the pandemic. Um, I was able to give my insights on how to shape that for the future and to make sure that my clients were going to succeed in the future. I'm an inspiration to my niece uh, who also wants to write a book. <laughs> <clears throat> so ACCA is a lifetime ticket to success. It's awesome. You can have an awesome work-life balance being ACCA qualified. Um, as you can see, I'm here in Bali and I'm working and I'm running all my businesses from one location. So what is it that you want? To work all over the world, to catch sunsets, to waves and ski, awesome adventures and experience life. Open your network to wonderful people. So today, thank you. This is me, I'm ACCA. Thank you so much, Miss Alex. This is uh, so inspiring and also at the same time, making me very envious, envious of your life. So, <laughs> so <laughs> exciting wanting to be uh, where you are. Yeah, and, and, and uh, let's invite the other speakers while we collect questions from the uh, participants today. Uh, we have next uh, on the line, uh, Miss Abby, uh, she's an ACCA member uh, and she has an amazing story to tell. Yeah, so uh, Miss Abby has, uh, is the finance director of Pete Country Garden uh, Indonesia. Uh, she, she is, uh, that's a Fortune uh, Global 500 international company, uh, leading finance and legal department of local staff. And she also has an MSc in accounting and finance from the University of uh, Manchester. So, uh, Miss Abby, we are so excited to hear your part of the story. Hello, thank you. Thank you for the 
opportunity for me to share my experience with ACCA in this wonderful uh, event. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my, I'm a Chinese, so you can see the name is difficult to, to read. So you can just call me Abby. So, um, and now I, I'm currently working in Indonesia. Um, and uh, today I would like to share with all of you about my experience with ACCA. Um, I actually started uh, to get to know uh, ACCA uh, many years ago, which was in 2007, that's really, a uh, long time ago, yeah. Okay, that was the last year of my bachelor degree. Uh, I got my bachelor degree in China. And at that time I got an offer in, uh, uh, from University of Manchester for this uh, master degree of accounting and finance. So in the last year of my bachelor degree when all the others are you know, busy for, for a job or you know, uh, prepare for the uh, master degree exams. Because in China, if you want to get a master degree, you have to take the exams. So I was actually quite free. So I was thinking, okay, I need to uh, prepare myself uh, to study in UK because I had never been abroad. And all my class actually was taught in, in Chinese. So I think, okay, I need to study something that which can help with me for my study later on. Uh, that's why I start to search and found there is an ACC program. And actually quite lucky in that year in my university, uh, they started to adopt the ACCA program in their uh, bachelor degrees. I think it's almost the same as the uh, Tama uh, Jaya uh, University. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I I registered ACCA uh, student uh, through, uh, through my university and I start to take the exams. Uh, and because at that time, there, I don't know, I didn't really know how to study. So uh, after I know that the program is adopted by my university, I tried to sneak into their classroom and say, what is it? So from then on, I started to prepare the exams. And I remember I took two at that time in, uh, in uh, in that university, and then I continued my master's degree in UK. So uh, uh, I took the, the, the master's degree I took in UK is a one year course. So after that, I started to look for jobs. But because I graduated in 2008, which uh, was the financial crisis came, so it's very difficult for me to find a job in UK. Um, but I didn't really want to leave this country because I think I haven't gained much experience. So I want to continue uh, to, to work or study there. So, um, but um, PhD is not the way I want to go. So, so I start to take some part-time jobs and, and then continue my, with my exam for ACCA. Okay, and then uh, it took me around, I think around two years to, to study the ACCA there, but um, and luckily what I was thinking at that time is that I can do it uh, by self-study. So I study everything by myself. I didn't take a course and I took an exam, but I failed many times, but I still think, okay, I can, I can continue the study. So, and, and at that time I met my uh, husband, at that time um, boyfriend, but later become husband, who is an Indonesian. That's why I came to Indonesia afterwards. And then, uh, I stopped my study in ACCA. Uh, so, because uh, after I met with my husband and we got married and we gave, I gave birth to two babies. So um, I, you know, I couldn't concentrate on study anymore because I think, okay, I already got a master degree and so my life is there. I should concentrate on my family. And then I moved to Indonesia together with him. But I really feel that staying at home mom is not the life for me, especially after I gave birth to my seventh baby. I really start to wonder that what I'm going to pursue in my future. So I start to look for jobs. And I'm very lucky that I got a job in, in Indonesia um, soon. And then I continued with my study, uh, sorry, continue with my work. But I didn't touch the ACC anymore because this is like something that I don't want to touch and I don't want to think about anymore. I think that's the thing that I'm not going to, to, to continue in the future. Uh, I think uh, from what I'm thinking now, I'm just trying to escape from the responsibility at that time. <laughs> okay, but uh, 
Um, suddenly, there is something happens in 2016. I have one of my relatives came to visit me in Indonesia. So we have a vacation together. And I still remember that was uh, one uh, morning breakfast uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in Bali, I think, yeah. And he asked me, okay, how is your ACC? I said, well, um, I still have two courses left. I haven't finished. And he asked me, why do, why do you not continue? I said, no, I can't. I have two kids to, to, to take care and I have my job, I have no time. I have no energy to do that. And when my husband heard what I said, he, he, asked, he said to me, I think you should not give up. You should never give up the thing that you started. And if I don't expect you to gain anything from it, but I think you should not just give up by you know, others. Uh, because of other, because of the family, and then you will feel regret. How about you give yourself uh, a try? And then this gave me a thinking, um, is it really worth it to just give up uh, in the halfway? Actually, it's more than halfway already because only two courses left. So I think, okay, I made a decision that, that I want to continue, but I need the full, full support from the whole family. And they gave me the full support, which what I do is I quit my job and I left my kids to my husband, and I fled back to China to study. Because at that time, I tried to uh, find a course here, but I, I couldn't find it because this the P level in the last two courses. It's quite difficult for me to find a course here. So I fled back to China and I rent a small apartment near a school and I studied for three months. And you know, uh, quite funny is that when I started to register for the exams, I found that my account was frozen because I didn't pay for the membership for say, for four for five years already. So I called the ACCA UK um, office and I, I said to them, I want to unfroze my, my account and I have to pay that paid back all the unpaid fees and then I registered my exams. And I found that actually that was the last chance I can take the exams. Because if I miss that one, all the, all the exams I took for the P level actually will, will no use. I have to start to continue again because there is a 10 years uh, limit for the exam. So that means I only have the last chance to pass the exams. So I studied for three years, three months, and then I tried all my best because you know it's very difficult uh, for me to concentrate after such a long time I haven't uh, you know do this kind of study and exams. So uh, so very lucky that uh, actually after this um, three month study I passed the exams. So I I feel I really feel so lucky because I thought I couldn't. I even bring back the books to in back to Indonesia. I was thinking okay if I fail I will continue in the next one. But I'm very lucky to, you know, I pass exams. So uh, as I said to you guys that actually I, I quit my job, right? So when I came back to, with, to Indonesia and I continue to find another job and um, the CFO in that company uh, later told me that the reason he gave me an offer is because he saw me that I am an ACCA, ACCA member. At that time, actually, not yet come to the member, but I wrote in my CV that I have accomplished all the courses in ACCA. So he gave me the offer. And, and this, in this offer, my salary actually doubled compared to my pre previous, uh, previous work. So it's, in total, it's only three to four months. So I got a job that doubled my salary. And the which was more amazing is that to less than three years, I replaced this CFO. <laughs> now I become the finance director in this company. Yeah, that's generally my experience with uh, ACCA. Um, I, the reason I would like to share with you guys about this experience is because I think I benefit a, a lot from the, this certification. But not only the certification, I also benefit a lot from the study of this course. Because um, for the job, what I'm doing now that um, I really feel that what I learned from ACCA that I can utilize into the, into, uh, the real working life. For example, the job I'm looking for um, after I take the exam, I start to think that I cannot just be a person that doing the financial reporting or the statement. Because in the ACCA uh, uh, study, you will know that 
uh, the financial reporting and you know preparing for all the statement to the bookkeeping is actually just a record of the history of the business, but. Uh, the recording of the history of the business, uh, business uh, history of the business is actually to provide more uh, um, indicators or information for the future plan of this company, which is to provide the strategic planning of the whole uh, company and to the management team, which that you have to go to the second level, which will be the analysis and the forecasting. So when I start to understand this one, I, the job I'm looking for, I will never find a uh, look for a job that just uh, stopped in the financial reporting. I go to the further level, which is the forecasting, uh, for forecasting and, and analysis. And after I'm doing this, I, because I have the experience in the financial reporting, I have the experience in the forecasting and analysis. And I also, uh, I also think that uh, I have the ability to, you know, to organize a team that to combine all the team together. And then finally, we can provide the very strategic uh, information to our management team to help with the business plan for the, for the company. Uh, so I think um, that's what I, uh, have gained from ACC. I really thank for for what I have started, for all the contributions I have made, and for all the support from my family. Okay, thank you. Wow, wow! Thank you so much, Miss uh, Happy. Sorry, Hino. thank you. It's, an, it's a it's a very amazing uh, story, full of uh, you know. People say it's only you know we only see the success of someone, yeah. But behind the success, all the struggles and all the sacrifices, you know, you. I can't imagine you leaving the, your two children and then going to China for three months and, and finishing your, your, your ACCA. That, that must be an amazing, uh, quite, quite, a, quite a difficult uh, and a challenging uh, part here. Yeah? So uh, that's the, thank you so much, Ms. Abby, for, for, for inspiring us with your story. And while we hold on to the questions from participants, uh, and I'm sure they want to know more, uh, let's hear it from uh, Ms. Uh, Natasha. And uh, Natasha is the youngest in the group. Yeah, uh, she is one person who will uh, make us feel a little old. Yeah, so uh, because of her of her young age, and she has uh, started her journey very early. And uh, you know, uh, let's let's hear it from her about uh, how at the young age uh, she decided to take this part, uh, a course that you know professionals normally take at the master's degree level or after finishing the bachelor's degree, but Natasha took it right after high school. Yeah, so let's hear it from you, Natasha. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Manish, the ACCA Indonesia team, as well as the Admajaya team for giving me such an amazing opportunity to be able to be here among all these individuals uh, who are very brilliant. Um, thank you for holding such an exclusive event also. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Natasha Kimberly. I am 18 years old and currently I am an ACCA student. If I may just share my screen so that I can give an overview of my academic background. Okay, I hope it's already there, my screen. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. so. A little bit of a story. Um, it all started uh, in 2018, just like Sir Manish have mentioned earlier. So right after I graduated from junior high school, which is in Indonesia, we know it as SMP, Sekolah Menengah Pertama. Um, I directly started my ACCA journey through LSAF, which is London School of Accountancy and Finance, the gold approved learning partner of the ACCA in Indonesia. And six to seven months after I joined, I finished the knowledge level, the one that Mr. Franz also mentioned when he explained the ACCA qualification. So knowledge level is the first level of ACCA qualifications, which involve the three modules, the first three modules. Why I took that? Because I had no accounting background. As you know, I started my ACCA right after I graduated from junior high school. So I had no accounting background. I also had no English background because uh, my school was like a national school. So full in Indonesia. So it was quite a... 
um, challenge for me to adapt with the new environment where uh, most people speak in English, especially the lecturers are all, um, I mean, not uh, Indonesian. Some are Pakistanis and also Indian. So um, I had to adapt with that condition. And thankfully, I finished that within six to seven months. And right after that, I also continued with my skills level, the second level, which involves the six modules six modules and I finished that uh, within two years. Actually, there was a delay in between because of pandemic. There was a delay about six months. I was supposed to finish uh, everything um, six months earlier, but then because of pandemic hit, so I had to delay my exam for six months, which was a stress, uh, stressful condition for me as well. And after I finished the skills level, I obtained the certificate from ACCA in advanced diploma in accounting and business. And I started doing the RAP, research and analysis project, which in Indonesia, I believe we call it as scripsi, like mini thesis. And uh, it is from OBU, the Oxford Brookes University. And Mr. Manis happened to be my mentor at that time. <laughs> so I worked with him and he, he was very supportive and helpful. And thankfully, I thank God that last Earlier in this September last month, I completed the bachelor degree in applied accounting from Oxford Brookes University. And now, at the moment, I am continuing with professional papers. I am about to do my first exam on December, uh, fingers crossed. And um, so I'm studying while working at the moment. So I believe that's all from me for my academic background. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Nat Natasha, for sharing your part of the story. And uh, yes, I remember uh, mentoring you for OBU, and you know, uh, uh, like like all like all have gone through. Yeah, Miss uh, Alex have, was invested almost uh, twenty five years uh, of her life before getting to where she is now. Uh, Abby has uh, an amazing. Uh, a story of, of all the sacrifices and the journey and only to the last bit of uh, the journey to finish ACCA and in your start your journey about coming from a non-accounting background and coming from a national school and all the fears you probably had that, that you know that how will I do it can I do it you know so I think there's, there's this line between all the three speakers that uh, they they all didn't see uh boundaries as boundaries you know uh, or limitations as limitations you know they all saw that at, as a challenge you know it reminds me of, of uh, an eagle you know when they see a storm coming by uh, instead of uh, running away uh, they spread their wings you know and use the storm to even fly even higher you know so so all, all three of you are, 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 are like eagles to me you know you saw difficulties challenges and you used it to fly fly even higher so uh, with that, okay, I, I open the discussion uh, for a panel discussion. And while we are having this discussion, uh, from all everyone who is here, yeah, uh, those uh, lecturers, those uh, maybe your students, or maybe you're from uh, university, uh, feel free and use this opportunity uh, to ask questions, uh, either by posting it in the chat, or you would like to unmute to ask those questions, uh, feel free to uh, do so. Right. So, uh, since we are talking about the uh, the latest uh, report from ACCA with regard to the career navigator and dividing it into the four career zones, uh, and 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 so can we discuss on the first part about how how AC, how do you see uh, ACCA uh, allowing you to experience uh, the journey in terms of the uh, the variety of skills. Because I know the branding of ACCA uh, is more towards accountancy, but the uh, to some extent the word accountant uh, and the connotations attached to the word accountant are sort of uh, not represented well in exactly what we do on the daily basis. So maybe I would like to ask, uh, starting from Miss Alex, that on a day-to-day -day basis, in terms of uh, the variety of skills that you deploy in doing your work. Uh, and, and, and how is it so different from what people think that what accountants do? Uh, so maybe you can share a bit on that, uh, Ms. Alex. 
Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. And it was really inspirational to hear the other the others and uh, Natasha and Abby, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think um I think when people say like you're an accountant, I think they initially have an image that that you sit at a desk and that you type away and you add up numbers and you look at finances. Um, but my journey is far from that. Um, yes, I do look at financial data, but what I do is I um, I help my clients, I help them grow. Um, I look at future information, we use artificial intelligence technology to future forecast in two years in advance, sometimes longer. And we do predictions and we help them to plan ahead to help them through the pandemic. And that was something that I've never done in my life, but I mm. had the skill sets there ready to be able to help and lead and manage. Um, and then we've now come through to, from the pandemic and essentially, you know, I now can look at my clients and say that I was successful in that journey because they all had that business continuity. Um, we provided cash flow forecasting. We provided them with the support that they needed. Um, people grow um, as well. So we've set up internationally. We've communicated and networked with people over the world. We now help over the over, sorry, international clients set up in the UK, and that's then international taxes. Um, you know, cross-border importing, exporting. So it's just the uh, the uh, level of skills that I've developed, even during setting up a business, um, has has the foundation of that. I've not been afraid of it because I've learned all that from doing my ACCA exams. Because I remember doing my exams, and I remember getting my head down, thinking, "Oh, this is going to be worth it. I just want to. It's going to be blood, sweat, and tears, and I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass." And I know that the actual dedication that you put into the exams, what you put in is what you get out. And I know now that from those skill sets that I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. I set up my practice and now I'm moving on to the next steps and I'm setting up other businesses and other investments because I'm actually learning every single day, not just from my own journey, but from what I see my clients go through as well in all their industries. Right, right, right. That's, that's so much of a uh, uh, variety, Miss uh, Alex. You know, that leads me to a, uh, uh, a thought-provoking uh, question that, you know, many believe that we should be a specialist. You know, whenever they think about certain field of study, we should be a specialist in this area. Uh, but when it comes to people doing variety of things, people think, oh, you know, you're just being a jack of all trades, you know. Uh, but I don't know, to some extent, uh, you know, whether when we are working, we need to have uh, knowledge in various areas. So I, I just want to know your thoughts. Do you, do you think specialization versus knowing variety of skills? What, 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 what is the reality on ground? I think over time with experience, you develop so many skills and you do bring a lot of the, it, it just becomes second nature. You just, everything just automatically just starts coming in. It's quite a lot at the beginning, but then naturally you just have all these automatic thoughts, strategic planning, you know, um, even with the, the data and the analysis, you can read the information and you can instantly, instantly transfer that data and explain that data. Mm. Um, so I think essentially, you know, the skills there, they just, they, they, they come. And in terms of uh, finding something that's more specific, um, in, if I, if I said, for example, I have an accountancy practice, I niche with my clients with SaaS models, with um, software as a, as a service and technology and creatives, because then I can use the skill set for one specific area. But then every single client, for example, has different requirements. But the, to be able to adapt and to be able to change, that's what ACCA trains you to do. That mm. You can come in and out of different skill sets. So it's whatever you choose, everything that you're learning every single day is going to become part of your daily life and your daily career. It doesn't yes. just stop with ACCA. My, my learning continues every single day. Yes, yes, yes. It's willing to be adaptive. I think that's what I'm thinking while you're saying that the ACC really imparts that value of being adaptive and, you know, the regular changes in the ACC syllabus is a proof of that, you know, one year you studied this and the next year is something else, yeah? So yeah. Miss, Miss, <laughs> Miss Abby, you want to share, share your part of your uh, views on, on, on the variety of uh, the skills needed in your daily life? I mean, uh, share with us 
uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, how, how is the variety of skills needed for your uh, doing your uh, uh, job as a leader? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Well, it's amazing to hear from Miss Alex about all your all your uh, broad experience. You know, uh, I think um, I'm a little bit different because I work in one company. You know, Miss Alex work for many clients. So, um, but even just for work working for one company, I also feel that. The ACC equipped me a lot of skills and capabilities, especially in the management level. You know, if I think that I only get my, you know, uh, academic degree, I will think, uh, I think I'm, I will more go into the special uh, uh, specification. But um, the ACC, what ACC equipped me is about the business uh, analysis and the uh, management skills. I, I take as an example. Um, the P, P7 or uh, which one? Uh, advanced Performance Management, this course. Yes, I really yes. learned, yeah, this one, I learned a lot. Why? Because when I joined my company, I found, okay, my group company actually is using the, uh, the finance department lead the business. But how do they manage? You know, you know, the people who is doing the operation, you want them to understand those accounting factors or you know, indicators is very different. But how can they make that using the finance to lead the business operation? What they do is to go in through the performance, performance management. So they have an incentive program for all the management team. So they set up the target and they find the successful uh, uh, key factors and then they put into a formula and this collect to the bonus that the management team will, uh, we can get. And in this formula, they will understand, okay, these key success factors are there. So they really in line with the, uh, the, the company target to the uh, management operations. You know, so when I first see the whole system in this company, I suddenly connect to the course in the advanced performance management. That's what I see that my course is really applied in the business the company is doing. I feel so excited, you know. So, uh, so I think, uh, you know, if we only think that uh, accounting is a profession, that the work you are only doing this, but you can, if you cannot say, actually, it's also give you a logic and your concept to really lead the business operation. That will be a really, uh, you know, pity because you say that with the technology developing, I think all those kind of uh, daily accounting reporting work will be replaced by the by the technology. But I think the business idea, this kind of management skill, can never be replaced by the technology. I, I really feel thankful for the ACC course because the course is very updated. I remember when I studied the business analysis, it's already input the big data, you know, very, you know, I, I was yes, really yes. amazed by that because actually I was far away from this kind of new things long time, but the course is always updated. So you can always get the new information. And also it also equip you with the idea that accounting should not just be a person sitting in front of the desk typing the numbers. You have to know the business. You really need to know the business. So you know what's the numbers uh, meaningful for you. Why do you have to do these numbers? As you remember, one of my mentors told me before that uh, you have to go to the construction site to see that how many steel you use are used in there. And then when you do the numbers, you really can analyze, okay, the inventory, data, the data of the inventory here is reasonable or not. So the accountant should not just be doing the numbers. You should know the business. You need to know how does the business working? How, how does the marketing people doing the work? How does the cost come, uh, you know, the, the comp composition of the cost? Yes. So, but this all actually uh, equip, uh, can be equipped by the ACCA knowledge that given to us. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm thinking about your performance management uh, example. You know, uh, there was there was a company that called us and said that you know we have uh, this list of uh, graduates that we have recently employed. Yeah, but when it comes to uh, actually telling us what are the cost components and what are the reasons why these cost components have moved in this way, why variance analysis has uh, shown these results. They always know how to present the data, but they don't know 
uh, the re- why behind it and they don't know how it will move forward and they don't know uh, uh, you know what should we do then so so they're only telling us a bit of part of the story and not telling us the whole uh, uh, story you know so yeah performance management is a, is a, is a very crucial uh, element of uh, Uh, of the components yeah yeah so uh, yeah. moving to uh, natasha uh, you know you could have taken uh, specialization uh, while after you finish uh, school maybe you thought but you taking acca means you opted for all those uh, varieties you know uh, so i i want to know your thought process of of you saying that okay uh, i want to learn all was it because you were confused you know uh, in indonesia we say galau you know uh, that Oh, I have to choose this, this, this. Since I don't know, I'm very young. What I have to choose, I might well as learn everything. <laughs> was that something of that thought, or what was your thought process? Okay, thank you, Mr. Manish. Um, yes. I think it's quite a funny story on this one because yes. um, at first the main reason that triggered an interest in me to take ACCA, uh, is because of um the fact that ACCA is a global body, which means that my status as an ACCA student. will be recognized in like 180 countries which means like i will have the opportunity to like build network all across the world right um and second was because my favorite subjects uh, when i was still in junior high school were math and english so i decided to take this opportunity because i always believe that opportunity does not come twice and to answer your question at first i didn't know that acca or um, offer like this kind of program where we have to learn variety of skills but then when i reach this point i think it is a very crucial point that acca has because i believe that so far it's not only in terms of academic uh, i also have improved like in terms of self improvement and now that i have uh, gained knowledge in relation to audit um tax computation finance and then just like miss abby and miss alex has said like we learn across the way like uh, learning by doing but like just like miss abby's example like when she had to go to the construction site and then to calculate the inventory i think it's so very uh, interesting to hear that because so far i have only like i have only like uh, learned in uh, how do i say like academic like in terms of like answering questions but now that i have heard from someone who has worked um um who has been experiencing that kind of thing i think it is very exciting for me to finally in the future to um experience that too that's right that's right you know uh it, you know one of the very different way uh, uh, acc operates is that you know your your qualification uh, cannot be obtained until you get the experience right whereas you know in in a, in a normal in a normal situation uh, students maybe get exposure to internship like uh, four months or six months internship but but while you're doing internship you you hardly experience much because it's just administrative but but uh, with acca they have required that you need to have 3 years of uh, experience in order to get the acca title and that's where a lot of learning uh, takes place and that's why acca provided that eco uh, system of the acca approved employers that you know you can get those 3 years experience in the net, uh, network of employers uh, across the world so so i want i want to i want to ask uh, uh, miss alex and miss abby particularly because you are more on the on the uh, experience side of with regard to employability uh, what what do you think with uh, if you were talking to young young graduates who are who are finishing their high school and they are confused about uh, because they are always thinking about will i will my qualification be still relevant will it give me the right employment opportunities and i know younger guys now they they are always wanting to get rich fast yeah they, they, everybody wants to be a millionaire yeah so 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 what is your advice to to the young ones with regard to employability miss alex um i think um i mean yeah it's uh, it's true what you say like everybody wants to get rich now and they want to um, you know find a career path i think one of the things that you know we're just we're discussing here is actually the opportunities that you can gain from being acca qualified so i mean i did uh you know gain my experience through you know getting jobs 
um, and, and learning and understanding through various um, small um, practices. But essentially, my goal, my end goal was to set up my own practice, my own business. Um, it wasn't actually <clears throat> necessarily to set up an accountancy practice, but because that was what I knew inside out, um, I realized next year that um, I'm going to have 25 years in the accountancy industry. So I think, you know, that said is that this career has taken me or the ACCA qualification for me has taken me through my entire life and it doesn't stop there. So, you know, I'm planning other businesses, other ventures with other people. Um, and so I think essentially when you know um, that, that whatever job or whatever career that you decide to go down, that ACCA is always going to be an amazing foundation. Um, sorry, my AirPods just came out. <laughs> um, and so I think, um, yeah, so whatever you whatever you do, um, the finance um, for any business is one of the um, key things when running any type of business, because you, you do sales, you do marketing, you have finance, you have you wear different hats all the time. But as soon as you drop the finance ball, essentially that is one of the most fundamental things that will make some, that's the difference between success and failure with any, any type of business, any type of job. So whether you work for a big company um, and then you do the finance department, like you're the key person. You're always going to be a key person. If you have your own business, you're always going to understand finances and more than likely be more successful so you can earn your million pounds quicker. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss, Miss Abby, what do you have to say to these young ones who are still in a confused state and still very ambitious, but yet confused how to start this uh, journey, you know? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, actually, instead of thinking to become rich, you better think that uh, where do you want to go in the future? And how are you going to get in there? Yeah, so thinking about how are you going to get in there, you have to think that what kind of capabilities, capabilities you, you have to obtain from now on. And then you really find a thing that really suits to you. Uh, if you want to go into the finance, but now accounting and the finance way, I think ACC will be a very good journey you can you know, go through, especially when you are in universities, because I don't know about the universities here. Uh, I think uh, like when I was in my bachelor degree, uh, honestly speaking, it's not that busy. I mean, there are always some things that I can ex explore. Uh, um, so yeah, in, instead of only just getting a degree, you really can think that you can get your qualification. You know, actually, from my experience, have you found one thing? Why it take me so long to finish all the exams? Because I started too late. I started in the last year of my university and then continue, you know, getting into a relationship, find a job, have two kids. And then it's all stopped my, actually, uh, my speed to get the ACCA done. It took me 10 years, really 10 years. <laughs> you think how many, how much money I have really, you know, spend on it, but I, I didn't get a result. So it's very lucky, I think, for the students, they can start from now on. Yeah, they can start to uh, study from, you know, the, the fundamental level and then getting into the professional level. And what I want to suggest is never, never learn from me, just study, uh, do the self-study because it's really not good. Why? If I, I just study by myself, the, the knowledge and understanding I can get is not really, cannot be compared with the teacher teaching to you. And so uh, we should not just think that our objective is to get the qualification. No, we should take this as the knowledge that we need to learn because it will benefit you in your future. That's why you really need to study well. You need to study uh, with the help of the teacher with in the, in the, in the environment of group of uh, friends you study together and you can really get the knowledge into you and finally one day it will really help you so um, what I would suggest is instead of thinking uh, thinking too much how to become rich just try to progress a uh, little by little every day and then multiply you know the interest you will get finally get into the place where you want to go that's a very valuable insight, yeah? Don't think about being rich, but go by progress, by progress. And also enjoy the experience, yeah, Miss Abby? Yeah? You said enjoy the experience and enjoy the networking with the with your uh, student, with your fellow classmates and teachers. And 
And that gives me to the last uh, question with regard to experience. Uh, you know, people want to experience that uh, I don't want to just sit in one place and I just want to be just working in one company. Uh, I want to experience the world. You know, I want to experience the, the being a global person and, and I want to be everywhere. So what, what, uh, they always think that uh, the only way to do that uh, is to just become, is just to be uh, an entrepreneur and then they will, you know, so it's a long process that they think about that mobility only comes when they become a very successful uh, entrepreneur. So what we want to ask you is, uh, do you think mobility is also available to finance uh, professionals, uh, even at the learning stage, even at the employability stage, uh, because many people think that, okay, the moment you become finance, you are stuck to one company and you are forever there and that's that you, you will retire in that place. So what are your views on mobility? Uh, Ms. Alex, you can go first. Um, yeah, I mean, this is obviously a really interesting question. And I think uh, sometimes I do think outside the box uh, with some of this stuff. Um, what I, from, from my learning and from what I'm, I understand and my experience of what's going on in today's world, the pandemic has enhanced digital working and remote working and studying. And it might not be agreed by all, but there are so many companies who are advanced and who are tech savvy, in particular SaaS models, who just recruit remote workers. And there are companies that employ remote workers. Um, in terms of studying, um, this would be quite tricky because you need to then have mentors around you. You need people to help you. You need people to train you. So unless there was some type of model where, for example, you were working remotely, but then you had a group or a community around you to help and support you, I think that could be achievable, but it's something that you'd have to build, build yourself and to network and to bring people around you. But to actually do the qualification, I think being in, in a job, um, yes, being at a desk, and learning from others around me, um, you could do that as well, because I think that's really, really important to have the um, understanding and to learn from people um, who are more experienced than you that can give you all the knowledge. Um, but it doesn't stop you from going to different countries. So in terms of where you study, so you could study in Jakarta, you could study in New Zealand, you can study in Australia, you can study in the UK, you can definitely do your exams. And I think as far as I know, they are transferable somebody was studying in ACCA UK and they wanted to study in Jakarta and we looked into it and it was possible. So I think it's something you'd have to look into. Um, but for me, my goal from the beginning, like my end goal was to travel, travel the world. And so I was so grateful for cloud technology because it allowed me to not only set up my own practice, but it allowed me to be remote and to work anywhere around the world and look after and take care of my clients internationally. So it does lead to um the the bigger picture if that's your end goal yeah yeah you, you are a perfect example of how you can still travel the world and still serve a range of uh, <laughs> uh, clients yeah that's that's yeah. amazing miss <laughs> abby i want to be a little bit more uh, specific with you people think that loyalty to one company uh, is important you know that you just need to be there for a long time to prove your loyalty and that's how you bring credibility and sometimes acc members are often uh, accused that because they have so much opportunities, they never stay in one place uh, for long. You know, they're always jumping around from one company to another. So what, what are your thoughts with that mobility? Do you advise for uh, ACCA students and members to have more, uh, explore more mobility or you, you think they should be uh, loyal to one company for a long time? Little controversial, but let's hear your views. Oh, okay. <laughs> when Miss Alex um, said that you can study in different countries, I suddenly think that actually I take an exam in different places. I yes, yes. Took an exam in Manchester United Stadium. <laughs> and, oh, cool. Yeah. And I took exams in two cities in China. It's a pity I never take an exam in Jakarta, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and come back to the questions. Actually, I suddenly remember uh, there was one day that uh, when my husband, told me that uh, he decided to come back to, uh, to Indonesia. You know, my husband was studying PhD in, in, in UK and he said to me, he wanted to come back to in Indonesia and ask my opinion. I said, no problem. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm studying accounting and finance. I have a qualification. I definitely can find a job wherever you go. 
because every company needs a company. Like that. <laughs> every company needs a finance. What I'm worried of, I'm not worried of anything. So I say, okay, no matter where you go, I think I can survive, you know. So I think this is a very good answer to the mobility, yes. Because this is a, this is a professional and every company needs it, really. And with this international qualification, it gives you more advantages compared with others. Okay, uh, uh, talking about the whether it's loyal to one company or you know or try different experiences, I think this depends on uh, what you want to gain from the work you want to get. If the, if one company you you work in one company and there's no career path you know uh, for you in the future, that's the time you have to consider to move to another company, but. Uh, but if this company, you know, you have different levels, you know where you want to go, go to pursue, I think you can start, stay a bit longer. But thinking about the, your whole personal life planning, um, I think working, being employed, being employed is actually just part of the journey, you know. So you can start, some people can start um, your own business from the early, very early age. Some people, you know, can just become employed and then uh, build the relationships, you know, uh, uh, sorry, build the networks and then you get more experience and then you get the idea, you can, uh, you can do your uh, own business. So um, everyone has a different path and, you know, everyone's personality is also different. Um, but no matter which way you go, I think the most important you need to think is what can you gain from this work? And what's your plan next? Yeah. And then you will make your perfect choice, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Totally true. So it really depends on your, <clears throat> your own plans, yeah? Your own plans and, and where you want to head, yeah? And I, and I love the part that, uh, you know, you, you are really able to have the, those relationships and uh, you can say, oh, I can, I can be employed in, even in Indonesia, yeah? With that kind of opportunity with finance, yeah? And... Many people say that, you know, okay, I can just get a bachelor's degree and then get an entry-level job. But, but the fact that universities like Atma Jaya has put a bachelor's degree and a certification uh, uh, together, you know, there's a very strong reason behind that, you know, which is to actually not only to get you an entry-level job, but to really prepare you for such leaderships like, like yourself, uh, Miss Alex and Abby and in the future, uh, Natasha. So, there's a huge, uh, 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 amazing opportunity with that combination of academic and, and professional. So can I hear some questions from the participants or from the teachers and from uh, Atma Jaya or any, anyone from the floor that they want to ask before we close the panel discussion? We still have few few minutes for, for questions. I'm sure many of you are intrigued by the journey of these th three speakers. Go ahead and unmute yourself or uh, you want to put it up in the chat box. Uh, we are okay with that. Maybe from Matthew. Matthew, any question, Matthew? Not really, since I already joined a lot of this webinar. Okay. <laughs> I already asked a lot, and I already have Nikita. I already asked some question towards Nikita, though. But there is something that I want to say. I really, sure. really excited about the ACCA. And I really, really want to, like considering it. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn on my camera. Wait, I really, really considering it. Yeah, because it's. It, it opened up a new world for me, honestly, mm. because there's a lot of opportunities, right? Like we can see from the speakers here, like Alex, Abby, and Natasha already have so much experience. What do they get from the ACCA program? And I think it's really, really beneficial for us, especially we're in college, right? And most of us maybe in my, maybe in our second year or maybe in Turkey, we haven't really been busy with university stuff right so i think it's mm. best if you do it as early as possible I early think. as possible yeah so miss mm -hmm. abby if you had the chance would you have started your acca journey at the age of natasha 
she started when she was 15 yeah 15 or 14 natasha 14 14 <laughs> that's a ground breaking uh, thing yeah <laughs> okay so, you have the time you have so, the see, time to study 14 yeah, yeah. she she finished high school uh, junior high school yeah smp tika yeah Yes, correct. And then she directly started with the foundation program because ACCA has now launched the foundation qualifications to enter into ACCA early. So she took that opportunity in here. Yeah. Uh, different from our time. Our time, I think maybe yeah. they had to finish uh, a grade twelve and then enter into there was entry requirements. Yeah, mm -hmm. but now things have become very flexible. Yeah. But yet, uh, ACCA maintains this uh, challenge. You know, it's. Okay, you can enter, but to pass is a challenge. Yeah, so uh, the prestige the, is still a prestigious uh, qualification. Okay, so so it's eleven fifty six. We have four minutes. Uh, uh, any any other burning questions or any thoughts from the from the floor or any comments? I have a from question. Ms. Yes, I want to ask Natasha a question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha's <laughs> heart is beating fast. <laughs> so we're, we're asking each other. <laughs> well, I, I just want to know, like, from the stories that you've heard today, um, have you uh, changed your mind in terms of your journey? Like, where do you want to be once you finish your ACCA? What's your end goal? Oh, okay. Thank you, Miss Alex, for your question. Um, I guess because currently I'm working in the academic field and I have not... Um, experience the accounting finance and business field yet but i do have i definitely have the plan to just maybe start just like miss abby said to make um small progress day by day so i do have plans to at least maybe have the role in the accounting or finance field whether it's like junior staff or at least i want to know you know like the application of what i've learned so far because um i've just only learned theoretically but I truly want to apply the things that I have gained so far. And just like you, I truly um, have you as my role model because I think I have also told you that my main dream since I was a kid is to set up my own business also. Yeah. So I think Miss Alex is trying to recruit, recruit you live, Natasha. Wow, it would be so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> That's why she asked you that question. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Thank you, Natasha. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Miss Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Manish, so we... uh, I also want to ask question, but I think I'll choose Abby for this question. Uh, <laughs> uh, Abby, you have a very, I would say, inspirational story, especially, you know, it's kind of like uh, you're trying to start over again, um, especially after you know a lot of situational changes in your personal yep, life. Yep. Um, so it's not like um, you know you're already on that path, um, and then you know you just finish, you know, and, but you kind of like have to start over again, and then even have a kid. So, and that's uh, quite inspirational. But I think uh, one of the things that's also very interesting is the fact that you can go up. The later a corporate later that fast yeah yep. um so what do you think actually differentiate you the most with your peers that makes you uh, of course besides acca qualifications i think that is very important but maybe what do you gain from those qualifications you think that makes you um you know stand out i guess yeah thank you <laughs> thank you for the question uh, so i think um what i have been uh, is First, the ACC actually actually gave me an entry, you know, let me get into the door. Like what I said, the CFO said that he want to hire me just because uh, that he saw in my CV that I have accomplished the, the 40 exams. And secondly, I think um, I get the support from my family. So, I mean, I can really um, contribute to my time and uh, uh, into the work. You know, I have to say that for the accounting and finance staff, especially you and when you are not in that senior level, you have to work a lot. You know, overtime is, uh, you know, it's just the past you have to catch over with. I still remember there was one day I overtime until 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, so, 
So, but in all that way, you know, my family support me a lot. Yeah. Mm, I think uh, the third one is the, um, how to say the idea and the logic I think from what I have studied uh, make me outstanding from the others. Because uh, for me, uh, I have the logic that I'm doing the things, I will work out the flow and I will teach others how to do it. Because you know, uh, the team I have now is all local staffs. For me, I'm a foreigner, that's totally cultural difference. How can I make my uh, staff to, you know, to support me and to trust me and to understand the orders I got, I've gave to them. I really have to work out the, the flow and I put everything in the, everyone in the position. And I, I all my, I have four, uh, four uh, five sections. Uh, first one is the accounting and then budgeting and then financing. We get a loan from the banks and then taxation and the legal. So for all the five sections in my department, I will, um, every department, everyone, every section has a leader, the local leader. So what I'm doing is that uh, I support them and I guide them, but I let them do the work. So I think this is more about the management level. So I'm not just a normal staff, but I am thinking in the management level, can, how to make the whole team work properly instead of just me working, doing the work, but I lead them to do the work. And I put them sitting together and tell them to, that for every transaction, you let me know in your section, what will be the impact to your section? And then make everyone to think that, okay, how can they do the work? And I also teach them that you should not just work in your section, okay? You have to think in, you know, what will be the impact to another one? Because you need to gain the knowledge from it. And then the next step in my position will be you. So I think uh, that's the thing that can make me, you know, uh, not not really better, but just give me more chance. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I yeah, think yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, Manish, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sure you yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I was just saying that the drive, the drive, you know, ability to drive performance is 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 what leaders leaders do, right? Uh, not mm -hmm. only doing it yourself, but helping others to achieve that kind of uh, performance and even saying that you will take my position. You know, people normally Asian-minded think that, uh, you know, we have that saying, you know, Sikut Kiri, Sikut Kanan, Injak Bawa, and Nai Katas. You know, so we always go left, you know, we try to go hit people everywhere so that we can go up. But this is nurturing behavior and leaders are, have, feel happy when other people grow, you know. So that's what leaders leaders do. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Duan. Yeah, I mean, it is um, true by a sense also that you are empowering others. Um, you know, not just like uh, focusing on yourself or what are you doing only and then try to make yourself good. But, you, you know, you actually wants to make others also achieve their goals. So that way, then you actually can achieve your goal at the end, which is yeah. that's what it's supposed to be. You know, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. every leaders understand that too sometimes. You know? Exactly, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, so I think the time is uh, already a bit past. So... Uh, and then we can, uh, you know, uh, pa, pa, pa Franz, maybe you want to show the feedback form that you uh, want to get feedback from the participants. <laughs> and uh, that's her daughter there. So, and then uh, from then, then after we can close the session by taking a, a picture together. Uh, yeah, pa Manis, before we close the session, actually, uh, Atma Jaya team has already prepared us for with a, a small quiz. So I okay. think we can spare another five minutes uh, only for sure. the participants to uh, to join the quiz. Uh, yep. But before the quiz, uh, of course, we can take the group photo. Sure. So please uh, uh, take a scan of this picture and then you can uh, provide the feedback to us. I'll just stop sharing first and then uh, we can take a group photo. Yeah, Miss Tias, probably you can help us with taking uh, some screenshots. Okay, uh, sure, uh, thank you. Okay, so maybe I will give another one minute for all the participants to turn on the um, camera. Uh, we have two pages here. 
So maybe we make this uh, first page full first. Maybe uh, Darren, Christina, Dylan, uh, Ria, Divanda. Maybe can turn on the camera. So we have this uh, group picture. Yeah, while, uh, while everyone is putting on their camera, I would like uh, personally to thank all the speakers for attending the event today, uh, Miss Alex, Miss Baby, and also Miss Natasha. Uh, of course, also to Bu Hani and Pak Manis, and Bu Tia, Bu Lydia, Pak Bimo, Matthew from Atmajaya. Uh, uh, last but not least, all the participants yeah, for uh, sparing your time on the weekend with us. So I think most of us are on the camera already. Okay, so I will count it down, yeah. So one, two, three. Okay, I think the second page is not, okay, not, there is no participant on the camera. Okay, okay. so maybe I will give it to Matthew. Yeah, yeah. Miss Diaz, just a reminder, if you can share, uh, you know, how to contact you uh, or our contact ad contact address, email address or number, so participants can contact you after this uh, seminar. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I will share. Thank you. In the box. Yeah. Okay, Matthew. Uh, okay, I take it from here. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen. So we're going to play a game, guys. I think most of you already knows this game. It's called Kahoot. Is the voice audible right now? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes. Okay then, so I'm going to wait for maybe around three minutes for you guys to join the Kahoot game. So if you don't know how to play this game, just join by clicking www.kahoot.it and insert the game pin on the screen. So we're going to be waiting for around two to three minutes. So if for those who will win, you will guess and you will and hopefully you will win some a good prizes, right? For the best of the best. How many questions are there in the quiz, uh, Matthew? Uh, there are five questions in this quiz, so it's very easy, guys. Okay, yeah, so we'll go, we're will we going to pick three winners and uh, we'll give out uh, ACCA official merchandise for all the winners. Yeah, so maybe if you can just register yourself through the website, uh, you can put the pin uh, on the screen and then your name will appear. They're waiting for some participant. By the way, for those of you living from abroad, Kotoko <laughs> is one of my favorite food. Just so you know, there's some some cute names in the participant right today. The question is is it is about the presentation that the other speakers information before. So if you guys really really pay attention towards this webinar today then you will easily pass and win the prize. Yeah, I think we have uh, think more and more people, yeah? Yeah. Do we need to... Uh, but first, do we need to wait a little bit? Uh, yes, I think uh, most of the participants have already entered the, the Kahoot. Yeah, so is everyone is everyone in? Maybe, yeah, okay, we, we have 18 people. 
Okay then. So I will start now, yeah. Okay, you yeah, be ready, guys, with the phone. Okay, guys, get ready for get ready. I'm going to start the quiz right. So this is the, like a quiz. It's very easy. So first question: What does IPA stands for? Maybe it's about Uncounting International Program or maybe Manjaya International Program. What do you guys think? If you listen, wow. Oh, <laughs> only 4% made it in time. Maybe it's too short, maybe. Be quick, guys. This, this is only 10 seconds. Since we are running out of time, of course. We have very short time. Who is our international collaborator partner. Oh no, there's only three people that can answer it. Okay. The third question, what does ACCS stands for? There's only six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay, most of you get it right. Good job. Good job. Of course. Then this is proof that you guys really paid attention to the webinar, right? What so right now, what's the title of the degree you will receive from Oxford Brooks University? Come on. Okay. Yes. Okay. Bachelor's honors in applied accounting. Don't forget, guys. It, it's tempting. What are the requirements that are not needed to join IPA? Just a reminder that all of the benefits that IPA provides you will add your value. Okay, great. great. I'll score above 5.5. Okay, so let's see who is the winner. There's Mike, and there's Nick, and TK. Okay, congratulations for all the participants, for the, all the winners, I'm sorry, for all the winners. And maybe, how do we, how do you guys send the merchandise? Maybe Pat France, do you want to share a little bit? Uh, yes, uh, maybe for the participants, please hang on uh, until the end of the session and then I will collect your uh, information such as your name and also the address for uh, sending the merchandise. Okay, thank you guys for participating in this game. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, thank you guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank on you, behalf, you. Yeah, on behalf of ACC Indonesia, I just want to say uh, thank you again and have a great, great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so thank much, you. everyone. Thank you, Miss Alex, Miss uh, Ivy, Miss Olivia, yeah. Miss Amanis, Miss Tia. Yes, yeah, thank you. Miss Alex, Ivy, Ivy, and also thank Natasha. Thank Natasha, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for all thank the you. participants. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, terima kasih. <coughs> Is the YouTube live still going on, but yes.